Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to a session on engineering graphics with me, Yash Chawla, lecturer in mechanical engineering department at Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology. Since last time, uh, till last time, we had discussed introduction as well as loci of points. Today, we are going to move on to another topic that is engineering curves. So, we are uh, engineering curves have a wide application in uh, engineering, uh, be it an arc be it an arch in construction uh, in civil engineering be it a spring in mechanical engineering be it any component of electronics or say any computer uh, computer engineering component everywhere these curves are applicable for measuring the distance we use curves on the maps we use curves for navigation we use curves so we are going to study what are the classification of engineering curves what are the different types of engineering curves available and then we are going to start with conics today and know the construction of an ellipse by different available methods so we'll first go on to the classification of engineering curves there are basically six type of curves engineering curves available for us conics uh, cycloidal curves invol involute spirals helix sine and cosine curves each having uh, each are different from each other and have very different applications have different ways of constructions some methods of constructions are similar but have different parameters so the end result have different curves let's move on the first is conics now conics can be further classified into five uh, types of curves first is triangle triangle is basically not a curve we can say that it has sharp edges so we cannot name it as a curve but in engineering drawing we can call it a curve because it has edges uh, we have a uh, perception that uh, edges the, the figures which have edges are not actually curve but it's a wrong perception even a circle has edges but those edges are not visible because there are infinite number of edges on this circle and infinite number of line segments that form this circle that's why uh, it is also a curve and this can also be classified as a curve. Now why this name conics has come up? This name conics has kind of come up because if we take a cone and we cut it uh, by a plane of different orientation. Suppose this is a cone that I have and then I am cutting it with different orientation say uh, vertical, horizontal, then with an angle or again uh, with a steep angle, with a slight angle, with parallel angle. So with different types of angles of the plane that I use, the different orientations of the plane that I use, I get different uh, curves that is there on the cone. So the first is triangle, second is circle. This is a triangle by denoted by number one. This is a circle. Then we have an ellipse, then we have a parabola and then we have an hyperbola. Here in conics, uh, apart from triangle, these four curves that is 2, 3, 4 and 5 that is circle, ellipse, uh, parabola and hyperbola are concerned with eccentricity. We will be discussing what is eccentricity. Here the eccentricity is equal to 0 for a circle. For an ellipse, the eccentricity is less than 1. For parabola, the eccentricity is equal to 1 and for hyperbola, eccentricity is greater than 1. Then we come to cycloidal curves. Cycloid, we have learnt locus. Now this is another application of locus where uh, locus is used for plotting these cycloidal curves. Now there are three types of cycloidal curves. One is a cycloid, second is the epicycloid, third is the hypocycloid. So let's know what is a cycloid first. This curve in green shows a cycloid. Now how this particular curve has been formed? This is a circle with a point P. This circle starts, the point P starts from here and the circle just rolls over this line and the point P rolls along with it. So the path which has been traced by this particular point P results in a cycloidal curve which is cycloid. Moving on to epicycloid, instead of this line if I make this circle with point P rotate on another circle. On the exterior side as shown in figure number two this is a circle with point p and it is rotating on the exterior of this circle then this point traces this red path which will be named as epicycloid for hypocycloid there is a slight difference from epicycloid hypocycloid 
the curve that circle rotates in the interior of this circle rather than on the exterior as compared to epicycloid. So, this curve, uh, this circle is rotating on this uh, blue circle and has a point P which tra uh, traces this red line which will, this red curve which will be named as hypocycloid. Moving on to involutes, to understand involute, uh, take a cylinder, take uh, say a simple uh, rod and then this is a rod, I am wounding a string around it. I am wounding or unwounding a string around it. Aap log patang udate hain, fir ki hoti hai? Fir ki mein kya hota hai? Hum log jo dhaga hota hai, usse ghumate hain uske upar ya usko utharte hain. To there are two types of involute curves that are there. One is a circle and another one is a polygon. This just depends on the cross section of the cylinder. If I am, uh, there are, aap log dekhenge, I'll take the same example again. Patang ki season mein there are दो दो टाइप की फिरकियां आती हैं एक दैट इज अ सॉलिड कर्व एक सॉलिड सिलेंडर होता है जिसके ऊपर हम लोग डोरी घिसवा के बांध देते हैं और सेकंड होता है जिसमें कि देयर आर डिफरेंट व्हाट आई कैन से रॉड्स स्टील वाली जो फिरकी आती है देयर आर डिफरेंट रॉड्स इन दैट नाउ यू कैन इमेजिन इफ आई कट दैट इफ आई वाउंड द थ्रेड ओवर इट देन इट बिकम्स अ हेक्सागन और अ पेंटागन एंड दैट सॉलिड थिंग बिकम्स अ सर्कल सो दैट इज द ओनली डिफरेंस in the figure when you can see that this is a uh, curve that is a circle and this string has is being wound or unwound around it so it forms an involute curve for a polygon i've taken example of a pentagon five pentagons has five sides one two three four and five so if i am doing the same process as i did here the if i'm wounding or unwounding this string then this polygon uh, this polygon pentagon it will result into the string will result into an involute curve for a poly polygon the next is spiral curves now spiral curves are you might uh, you, we must have uh, we draw spirals all the time it is like uh, in uh, diwali we have this chakri that rotates it's something of that sort so in the figure you can see that there are three types of spirals uh, say four types of spiral the third has been divided into two parts first is the archimedean spiral the second is logarithmic spiral third is uh, semicircular or quarter circle spiral now these are different the base if you have a different base the curve the end spiral will be different here in archimedean curve this has been illustrated this is an archimedean curve which starts at a point and then ends this is a logarithmic curves again it looks like a spiral as you can see and this is a semicircular uh, spiral that is this is a semicircle and then when we go on to extend it it becomes a semicircular spiral in this red you can see this is a quarter circle quarter circle means dividing the circle into uh, one fourth part that is this uh, you can see this one sec yeah this red part which has been again extended to form a uh, quarter circle spiral now the construction and in detail uh, discussion of these spirals will be discussed in coming sessions so we will not uh, waste time on this because we have more important things to learn in conics today so then comes helix this is a very common thing that you uh, encounter in your day to day life uh, you must have seen a spring now there are helix are two types cylindrical and conic the spring that is there in pens if you have a pen just open it up and there will be a spring if you have a uh, touch not pen then if you uh, open it there will be a spring in it the spring will be like a helix so that is an example of uh, cylindrical helix now imagine that uh, spring has this cross section now if i start to decrease the cross section like this then it will become a conic conic spiral instead of a cylindrical spiral it will become a conic spiral so it is very similar it's just that the base is big and then the upper top top part is gets smaller and smaller or you can turn the other way around also because it's not necessary that the cone has the base only as uh, the base is big the uh, base can be small also and then it can be extended also then also it is known as a cone so then the la lastly we have most widely used curves in electronics cs engineering uh, in analysis mostly because most of the processes uh, that are there the waves that are there trace this path that is sine and cosine it is very important for mathematics it is very important for uh, electronics it is uh, very important for mechanical so all the branch are covered in this 
and you can see that this is a sine uh, curve and this is a cosine curve. Sine curve starts from 0, goes up to pi by 2, then uh, pi, then 3 pi by 2, and then uh, 2 pi, where one wavelength is uh, completed. And this is one sine curve, which is in repetish, uh, repetition, we get a whole wave. So this, uh, this sorry, the distance between these is known as the wavelength. And this is the negative maximum, this is the positive maximum. For a cosine curve, we start, instead of starting from 0 in uh, sine curve, we start from pi by 2. So all the values of sine curves and cosine curves are absolutely opposite to each other. So we'll start from pi by 2, then we'll go, uh, then we'll go to 0, then we we'll go to the negative maximum, then we go to the 0 again, and then we go to the positive maximum again. So this is one wavelength of cosine curve. So let's get down to the main topic of today, that is conics. Now, I have kept this figure on this front page for a reason. See, I have cut this cone into different parts, into different pieces. Now, you can see that if I am cutting it horizontal, it becomes a circle. If I am cutting it with a right angle, then it becomes an ellipse. This particular black part is a has a circular cross section. This has an elliptical cross section. This has a parabolic cross section when it is uh, cut parallel to this line. And this has an hyperbolic cr cross section when there is the angle of cutting is very steep. We'll be discussing it. No, no problem. You will be able to visualize this in coming slides. It is just for making you understand that what we are going to discuss. So this ju figure just illustrates that this is a circle. This is an ellipse. This is a parabola, and this is a hyperbola. So you, visibly, you will be able to see the difference on how these curves are created by cutting a cone, and. Uh, what actually the end result of the curve is that is how does it look finally these are also mentioned uh, in this particular slide moving on first the triangle so most of you will be wondering that how a triangle would be created by cutting a cone then just visualize this now i have drawn a cone which has an axis of o o dash and a a dash now i have cut it with a plane which is passing through this point the top notch i have passed a plane which is uh, absolutely parallel to the axis of the cone, which is passing to the axis of the cone and has this a, a1 dash, sorry, a1 and a1 dash as the cross section. Now what happens is, if I remove the front part of the curve, I'll be able to see this, uh, this shaft line, which will result in something of this sort, this orange uh, part. This is the back angle, this, this I have kept it, I have not removed it. The front part I have removed, I have just cut it and I have thrown it off. So, this results in a triangle. The plane is passed vertically straight through this top notch that is the uh, vertex of the cone. So, it results into a triangle. Able to visualize it? Then, I told you we will be discussing what is eccentricity. So, we have discussed triangle. Now, the next uh, few things that we are going to discuss is uh, ellipse then parabola and then hyperbola. So let's first know what is eccentricity so that we are able to make out the difference between these three curves on basis of eccentricity also. Now take a look at the formula where E is, is equal to distance of a point from focus divided by distance of a point from directrix. Now what is a directrix uh, that we'll be discussing in the coming slides. Now you can see this line is known as directrix. Now how this line will be defined is that I'll take any point on, first I'll take any point on the ellipse, say M. Now, this is the focus of the ellipse. We all know what focus is, that when parallel rays of light are incident on the curve, uh, th those gets reflected and pass through the focus. So, this is the focus. If I cut this in half, all the parallel lines, uh, all the parallel rays of light that are coming uh, will be reflected to this particular point F. So, the distance MF is the distance of this point F uh, sorry, point M from the focus. The next is, this point M is at some distance from this line, which is the directrix. Now, we'll have one ratio. According to this formula, we'll have the ratio as MF upon M, M dash. This ratio has to be constant for all the points on the curve. Say, if uh, the ratio is coming as, say, for ellipse, it is less than 1. So, it is coming as 0 0.75. So, it means MF upon M, M dash is 0.75, that is the value of E. Then for all the points, that is all the points on this red ellipse, if I take another point here, N, then again, 
fn upon n n dash on this directrix will again result into 0.75 similar thing is with parabola instead of that for parabola all the for all the points of the parabola e has to come equal to 1 for this ellipse it will be e will be always less than 1 if it is on a parabola then e will always be equal to 1 and for hyperbola e will always be greater than 1 so now let's see what is circle the first thing that we know is for a circle uh, e is, is equal to 0 that i already told you previously now this is the cone see you uh, you'll be able to better visualize it this is the cone there is a plane this red part is a plane now it is exactly parallel to the base circle and it has been passed and this circle is uh, this this is the cross section of the cone that has been uh, that is left so we will be able to uh, visualize it better in this line diagram this is a cone which i am seeing it from the front and then this a a dash is the plane this red plane i have visualized it with a single line i am just seeing it from this end instead of seeing it in isometric view so i'll remove the top part because i have cut it so i'll remove this part a a dash and o so it will be i have named it as a1 and a1 dash this thing that is result if i view it from the top it will be something like this which is the circle which is a2 and a2 dash which is the diameter and this circle that is the outer circle is this base circle of the cone so i have the uh, resultant circle so for which e is, is equal to zero for an ellipse what i have to do is instead of cutting the plane exactly parallel to the base circle i will make it at certain angle as you can see that this is forming a certain angle you'll be able to better visualize it on this orange uh, line diagram in which a a dash is the plane which is passing through the cone that is o b and b dash you can see that uh, i'm sorry uh, yeah you can see that it is making a certain angle with the this this is a certain angle which is not too steep this is the angle that has been made by the base circle and i have again removed this o a and a dash and i have this 